The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and those crushed in spirit. Psalm 34, 18. But many of us, death will come to us in one form or another. Be it the death of a loved one, maybe your husband, wife, children, grandparents. But death is our eventuality. This is the mortality of man. What happens after we die is a question sometimes even for our loved ones. In this case, when a person in Trinidad and Tobago dies, what is next? What should one do? Firstly, when a person dies within five days, the death must be registered. And you may be asking, by whom? Who should register this death? It could be a relative, a person that was there for the death, or the person that is responsible for the funeral arrangement. And the second question, what documents do you need to work with? Marriage certificate, if applicable, birth paper, ID card, as well as your ID card, who's registering the deceased. Hi, hi, auntie. Yeah. Um, we're coping, I'm coping. Yes, I know, I know. Yeah, well, yeah, I understand. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I have, I'm leaving, getting ready to leave home now to go have a meeting with the lawyer about probating daddy's will. Yeah, yeah. Thanks so much for the support. Mm -hmm. I will. Love you. I'll call you and let you know how it went. Yeah, bye bye. Dealing with the death of a loved one is challenging, but there are certain legal steps that one must take. In cases where the testator, the person writing a will, leaves a will behind, how do we validate a will? What exactly is a probate? A probate is a legal process in which the assets of the deceased is transferred to his beneficiaries. Who are the beneficiaries? The beneficiaries are the person that will inherit the estate or the asset of their loved ones. There are certain terms that you will hear like the executor or the executress. In this case, Ms. Gray is the executress being female. The executress is a person that actually fulfills the wishes or the desires of the deceased. Now the lawyer is going to explain to Ms. Gray what is the legal process in order for the will to be probated. Because that court order document is called the grant of probate. In this case, there is a will. Is the will valid? We will know later on. Thank you so much, Mr. Edmund, for meeting with me. It has been tough. Yeah. But it is what it is, and I have to move on. Yeah, well, I, I know your father, and he was a very hardworking uh, guy, and I know that. Both of you had a very close relationship. Yes, so accept did. my condolences. Uh, thank you. I was there at the funeral and yes, did I a remember. very good um, send away for your father. Yeah, thank so you. Would thank have been you. So well, it so. is what it is. And I need to get this information yes. on how do I probate this will. Right, great. So my assistant in front, she gave me a copy of the will. You have the original will though? Yes, of course, right, of because course. Because you would need the original will. Okay. Um, just permit me to just speak to the will a bit sure. because in Trinidad and Tobago uh, there are certain laws that you must comply with when it comes to the formation of a will and in looking at this I'm seeing some of the terms um, and some of the conditions actually satisfied here so your okay. father did a really good job, job in, in having this prepared okay um, I'm seeing where his name is there as the testator I'm seeing your name as the executrix yes I'm also seeing that there's a date on the will mm -hmm. uh, where he also revokes all previous wills yes um, I'm also seeing where he identify who the beneficiaries are and okay. who is going to give which property in um, Plymouth and which property in uh, Point Fortin. I'm seeing that as well. Okay. I'm seeing he also has some money in the bank mm -hmm. and he allocated that to someone. Uh, and then there's a res the residuary clause. And with this clause, it's mm -hmm. more or less the assets that your father may not have um, 
accommodated for mm -hmm. and they will oh, right. or stated clearly yes. they will, yes. it is going to be given to that person who's named in the residuary clause. Oh, right. And then I'm seeing that he signed it, mm -hmm. signature right there, yes. and then there are two witnesses as well who also signed after he signed. Mm -hmm. So looking at this will, I'm seeing that it's a, it's a more or less valid will. Oh, okay. So that's, that's a good thing. It means that there wouldn't be, hopefully there wouldn't be any contention or so with this particular right. document. Now, what I need to let you know as well is we still have to go through the process of verifying that there was no other will prepared mm -hmm. and there's no application um, already filed for the estate of your father. Oh. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to first do a search and to confirm that there's no administration, there's no estate in existence uh, and there's no will. Okay. So we'll, we'll have to get the death certificate. We brought the death certificate yes, as well. Yes, I left it with your second. All right, great. So mm -hmm. we'll apply for the search and once we get the results back, then we'll be able to proceed with the other part of the application. Okay. With this application mm -hmm. as well, what we'll have to do is we will uh, have to prepare what is called the, an affidavit, uh, the executrix affidavit. So you would indicate that you are of a particular age, etc., and you are named as the executrix mm -hmm. in the will. Okay. And in addition to us preparing that, we also have to prepare the uh, a supporting or witness affidavit. Wow. So I'm seeing here that James John? Mm -hmm. James John yes. was one of the witnesses. Mm -hmm. Is he still alive? Yes, he is. Okay, he great. Is. So we'll have to get a supporting affidavit from him. Okay. Um, you have his contact information. Yes, I do. Right. So we'll make arrangements to have that affidavit prepared as well. Oh. And then there's some other documents that we'll have to prepare. Um, now, the, 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 wow. the, the, I'm seeing the properties and so in the will here. Uh, do you have the deed of uh, yes, these properties? I yes, and I have. The bank account information at least, the bank um, account number. Well, I believe if I take the death certificate with me, they would be able to give me an up-to-date yes? really statement. If not, if not we, we write a letter. Oh, okay. I'm attaching the death certificate yes. and letting them know that they're okay. okay. applying for the, uh, the grant of probate on behalf All right. of your father. Yeah. Right? I appreciate so that. what we'll do is uh, we'll have to also prepare what is called an inventory. And this inventory is oh. going to state exactly what the assets of your father are. Uh, Estates, yes. Oh, right? I understand. And when, once we state that, we'll then be able to determine what would be the average uh, fees that you'll have to pay. Fees? Yeah, there will be some fees. Uh, there's the reg uh, registration fee, and then there's some filing fees as well. And mm -hmm. well, a small legal fee, which is dependent upon the value of the estate. Uh? Right. Uh, so, more or less, that will be the process that we'll have to go through mm -hmm. uh, in order for us to properly have the assets of your father transfer it to the beneficiaries on this will. Okay. Are you with me so far? Yes. Okay, yes. great. I'm following. Great. Um, and more or less, those are the major steps that we'll have to be uh, going through. It mm -hmm. may take a little while. Sometimes yes. it may take three months or it may take longer. Okay. But I am very proud. And uh, um, um, it's, it's good to mm -hmm. know that your father made arrangements to leave part of his life yes. with the, the beneficiary status here in the world. Yeah. Well, knowing him, you know how thorough he was. He was so. Indeed, yes. indeed. indeed. Yes. So I'm, I'm quite happy to see that. All, All right. right. Yeah. Um, I appreciate the explanation. You know, my mind is still all over the place. Um, I would appreciate before I leave, if you could have your secretary email me, at least that itemized list of what we discussed. But truth be told, I anticipate some problems. And what we thought to me? Sadly, I think my brother, my sister, they have started to put out family members. They have started to move things from the home. <sighs> and I, being the executrix, I think you need to tell me or put things in place to let them know mm -hmm. that this is not how it ought to be. I, I tell you, based on my ex, um, experience and practice as an attorney, you would see these, these type of actions occurring often. And it's a sad state, especially mm -hmm. when there's a will and other persons may know that a will exists. And family members trying to claim assets and, and do all kinds of actions mm -hmm. that are mm -hmm. illegal. So what I'll do is I would prepare a letter to have it sent to them to let them know that uh, there is a, a will and allow the status quo to remain until we have the relevant uh, grant of probate mm -hmm. so that you, being the legal personal representative, mm -hmm. can administer and distribute the uh, estate of your father accordingly. So okay. this letter should put a pause to their actions? Yes, it, it should. If they don't, then we'll have to take other legal action. Okay, all right. Well, we're hoping that your, your siblings would be reasonable. Yeah. Reasonable. Yes. Let's hope so. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, Ms. Gray, you have any other questions, Ruth? As a matter of fact, yes. I've come to realize that life is tenuous. 
And honestly, I think I need to prepare well myself. So you'll need to, to guide me through those steps. That's excellent. We would make arrangements for you to visit the office uh, so that we could prepare well for you. What we will need is uh, all of your documents showing the assets that you may have, any property documents, bank documents, any interest that you may have in any other uh, assets anyway. And we also work with your ID card as well as your uh, birth certificate, any documents to just prove your identity and so When I die, I don't care. After I die, I don't care what happened to me. But I know I have to be buried and I must die. So Ms. Jadel, what is your reason for not doing a will? Because I have so much family. Everybody wants something and I do not know what to give this one, what to give that one. So it's better I leave everything as it is. And when I die, everybody fight for what I have, choose what I have. And I just happy when I die without displeasing anybody. In cases like this, we call this intestate. That is, the person dies without leaving a will. In Trinidad and Tobago, based on the Wills and Probate Act, there is what you call rules of intestacy. Meaning to say, if the person should die without leaving a will, how does the assets or the estate of that person be divided? It is what you call the grant of letters of administration, and this is a court order. Without this, the assets cannot be distributed. However, even for a will, for a will to be valid, there are certain circumstances that must be met. For example, there must, the person must be of sound mind, memory, and understanding. Without that, the will can be invalid. There are certain circumstances in which wills are forged and fraudulent in nature. How so? Sometimes people may sign documents not understanding what they are signing because it's their loved one, the husband, wife, or even children, sad to say. When you are signing any document, please read first. And for a will to be valid in Trinidad and Tobago, there must be two witnesses to witness the signing of that particular will. Without two witnesses, that will will not be valid. And if all these are met, then maybe, just maybe, you have a valid will. Trinidad and Tobago, respect your elders. Care for your loved ones because when they die, you can't see them anymore. They're not coming back. So enjoy what you have right now. What in jail is this? Where are my things? Mommy ain't even dead, good self, and buried. I feel as that jagabat outside woman and my father would not do this, you know. Because it's not my siblings. And no, mm -mm, they wouldn't do this. And daddy wouldn't do this by himself. No, 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 no. So it had to be something. I had to have rights here, man. I call in my lawyer. Hello? Yes, I need you to come and meet me by the house because they come and take everything from me. Mommy, just die. I know I had to have some kind of rights. I need you to come and look at the place and tell me, tell me what rights I have because they don't even have a coach for me to sit on good self. Hi. Hi. Thanks for coming on such short notice, but... It's no problem. You see, you see what's going on. You see what's going on. So what exactly happened? Well, my mother there, my mama mother died, right? right yes, so yes, we yes. buried her the other day. Yes. We're just supposed to, you know, everybody's supposed to take something. I don't know what the case is. So I come home here yeah, and this is the scene I come home to. Okay. Nothing, nothing at all. Right. So I, I, I know my sisters and them, they would not, they would not just leave me with nothing like this. Right. So, and my father already have things, so I do, I really don't think he will do this by himself. I really feel as he, he always had to. Right. I feel as that woman with him. I'm not too sure, but tell me what, what I could do. So, you said that your mom passed away, right? Yeah. How long ago she passed away? About uh, two weeks. Okay. Did anybody go to the court and apply for a grant of letters of administration or probate or anything, as far as you know? Uh, not, not, not that I know, no. Okay, all right. Well, basically, how I will put it to you is that somebody needs to go. 
First of all, one of the relatives actually needs to go and they need to apply to the court for probate or letters of administration. But did you know if your mom left a will at all? I ain't seen nothing yet. Okay, you never, she never mentioned anything to you, anything like nothing that? Nothing at all. So as far as you know, there's no will? No. Okay. So in a case like this, what one of your relatives or you needs to do is to go to the courts and apply for a letters, a grant of letters of administration. Okay. But there is a type of priority according to the laws of Trinidad and Tobago. So according to the Wills and Probate Act, there is a priority of what relatives that could apply. So okay. first up is the surviving husband of the deceased. So that would be your dad. Your dad. Uh -huh. Right. And mm -hmm. then second is the next of kin. And the third is the administrator general. So your dad should actually be the one to go to the court and apply for a grant of letters of administration as he would be the, the surviving husband of the deceased and the first in priority in the list. But how he could go is not he who won the things, is he woman? So... According to the Administration of Estates Act, cohabitants mm -hmm. do have a right to claim assets on their deceased estate. However, mm -hmm. she's the cohabitant of your dad, as far as you tell me, and right. she's not the cohabitant of your mom, of course. Right. So she actually is not entitled, according to the Administration of Estates Act, mm. only you and, well, do you have any brothers and sisters? Yes, I have two sisters. Right. You, your two sisters and your father would be entitled under the Administration of Estates right. Act because that act actually stipulates who would be entitled to benefit from, an est from a deceased person's estate when they right. pass away without a will. Okay. So in that order, actually the cohabitant would not be entitled to anything in this situation. Cohabitant? But she... My mother and father was married, living in the same house. She, she's not, she wasn't living there. But my mother always thought, you know, she always thought it was she. But she didn't know for sure. But he too nasty boy. Two weeks now and here, he living with the woman already. I want to bring her here to take my mother personal belongings. No. Is, is have any way that we could do it so my father don't have to? Because she will just get everything. And I don't want her to get nothing. Honestly, if you could get your dad's consent, then you would actually be next in line because you would fall under the next of kin category under the Wills and Probate Act and you can apply to get the grant of letters of administration. But that doesn't mean that your dad is not going to be benefit. Well, okay. that doesn't mean that he'll be in, he won't be entitled to anything under the estate. It okay. means that he would still be entitled to it, but he wouldn't apply for the grant, so he wouldn't be responsible as legal personal representative. You, you all would be. Okay, so that would mean like I just write a letter saying that he could, um, that I could do it on his behalf, kind of thing. Well, or? your lawyer would actually do it. So okay. your lawyer would actually draft the consent for him to sign, mm -hmm. and it would be part of the application that you are sent in, sent into court to get the grant of administration. Okay, and when I collect it, then I give it to him, or it's I would be kind of in charge of how it going. Your attorney would really handle ev everything to be quite honest. Okay. So your attorney okay. would actually get them into sign and everything mm -hmm. like that and they would prepare the application before you could go to the court and present the grant of letters of administration. Is there okay. anything else that you would like me to answer for you? Um, yeah, one thing. Um, is there a way we could forge a will? It is always advisable to create a will. However, one must pay full attention to the Wills and Probate Act because there are requirements for a will to be valid. So certain things can make a will invalid. For example, if a beneficiary signs a will, it could render their gift under the will invalid. What this means is that, for example, if someone's daughter actually signs the will, but the will says that I give my daughter this property in Chagonas, it means that the gift itself would actually be invalid. So it have an invalid provision within the will. And what that does is that it, it makes the gift fail. So the asset itself is not going to be distributed. It actually falls in the revisionary estate and whoever is in the revisionary estate clause, that is the person that it would go to. However, if there's no revisionary clause, then it actually fails completely. So you need to pay attention to that. If someone gets married after they make their will, it makes their previous will invalid. So after these invalidities happen, there is actually a grant that we call a grant of letters of administration with will annexed. And what this does is that it actually, we actually annex the will to it. 
So your attorney would annex the will to the application so that the court can see what the deceased wishes were before he passed. The court actually tries to honor the wishes of the deceased after his passing. So they actually go to the will and see what he would have wanted to happen and try to at least administer the estate as much as possible in that light. Oh death, where is your sting? Oh death, where is your victory? And one must ask the question, grief or greed? Because sometimes when a loved one dies, sometimes some relatives can be opportunistic and greedy. And greedy for what? From dust we are, and to dust we will return. This is all our eventuality. Instead, families should be united. Rather, sometimes death divide us. For what? Material assets and possession? There are some things worth far more. Appreciate one another. Appreciate time. Don't take people for granted because we are here today and gone like the wind tomorrow. <laughs>